Hey guys, this is Robert Ham again with Robert Ham Photography, coming at you with another tutorial about the Surface Pro 3 and how to edit your photos as a photographer wanting to use uh, a different device than, uh, like, say, a Mac or a traditional laptop PC. The Surface Pro 3 is exceptionally well suited for this. Um, I, so I've been using it. I've, I've must have imported a couple thousand pictures in here, and um, you know, I've I've enjoyed using it. I will tell you what I do because this is my work device. Um, I just import a couple of events. You know, like right now I've got 2,000 photos in here and I only work two or three events. So it's just my recent catalogs that I'm working. I still keep all of my backups on my main computer, which is a MacBook Pro with a Retina display, a Core i7 model, graphics card, one gig, and um, eight gigs of RAM. Really nice machine. And this, this machine right here performs comparably. Of course, it's no, it's not as fast. Um, however, I don't take that with me. I mean, I take the Surface Pro with me everywhere now. I can sit and edit a photo while I'm getting a cup of coffee at Starbucks. I can do so while waiting for, to pick up the kids. I mean, I can edit all over the place. Um, so it's a lot of fun. So let me just share with you um, so what I do. So first of all, um, this is a, this is kind of not fair because I've already got these photos set up. Um, and we're actually in the library view, as you can see. But what would normally happen is I would come in, let's take this, you know, a thousand photos. Here's a library with over a thousand photos in it. Um, uh, really nice wedding that I did over the weekend. Um, you know, and, and I took it in Virginia Beach, of course. Uh, you know, the Hilton Oceanfront Resort. You know, and you know, so out of out of eight hours, I have a little bit over a thousand, about a thousand and thirty images. And so, what do you do? Well, firstly, I go through and categorize them all: one, two, three, four, or five stars. And basically, it works something like this: um, one star are all my detail shots. So, in my workflow, things I take pictures of, like the cakes and uh, other stuff like that is is one star. Now that doesn't mean that it's no good, it just means category number one. Uh, then as I continue, I move forward, go to category number two. Category number two are candid shots. Any shot that does not include the bride or groom, but includes their guests, um, you know, and so anybody that is not the bride and groom. And all of these are the raw images. So, you know, some of them are I shot with a Fujifilm X-T1. So they're around 32 megabytes, like this one right here. Some of them I shot with an OMD EM5. So they're around 15 megabytes. Uh, and some of them I shot with the EM10. Once again, around 15 megabytes. Uh, you know, so it just depends. So anyways, I go through and I categorize these things. Uh, category three, as we're coming across right here, is family portraiture. You know, so any portrait that I've done of course, while uh, while there, I do portraiture at all of my weddings. I do um, not just of the bride and the groom, but um, and not just of them, but actually the all of their guests if they want portraits or whatever, they come up and do portraits. Category four is uh, any picture that the bride and groom may be in with guests. Okay, so it's a picture that has the, uh, the bride and the groom, or the bride or the groom. So any picture that the bride and the groom is in and they are with the guests is in here, you know, and then category five is really just the pictures of only the bride and the groom, single shots, they can be together, things like this right here, beautiful shot, this does uh, not count because the subject is very nicely separated from the background, nice bouquet and blur, um, so this one is a category five shot because, you know, it, it focuses directly uh, on, you know, on my bride right here. So shots of silhouettes of the ring hand and everything else and dancing and stuff like that. Shots that focus on specifically the bride and the groom. And so it was so cool. He cut his sword. I mean, he cut his cake with a with a saber. And I just thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Um, I don't know right he's trying to get it out. Uh, note to self, it's hard to serve cake with a saber, but it's easy to cut cake with a saber. How about that, huh? Anyways, so what my purpose here was to do was actually to show... Um, uh, just anything is greater than or equal to. We'll do that. So my purpose was to... Let me... Sorry, guys. Just trying to get this. And here's like thousands of photos. Come on. Go away. Now, here we go. All 1,030 photos. And, you know, the surface is just scrolling, you know, easily just scrolling straight through. We stop. We want that photo. You know, we can tap on it and boom, there it is. You know, so look at, you know, look, these, these are... Oh, beautiful ring shot, huh? Lucky. That's one of my deliverable items right there. Um, uh, nice that we landed on that. So you can see that it's very responsive. Um, let's just take a photo that I didn't edit for whatever reason. Let's go, um, is 
less than or equal to, let's just do is equal to no rating. So we've got 585 photos that have no rating. And let's take something that's got a really weird white balance. You know what I mean? Okay, I tried to move it. Um, the pin really wants to function as a pin. Let's take something with a really funky white balance. I can think of some shot. Ah, here we go. Great. Uh, I want to get a shot that would just normally be yuck. Okay, so this is a shot that I didn't use. I just want to show you how we'd go ahead and edit it. First of all, I'm going to get rid of this window pane so I can make it larger. That'll go away in just a second. I tap on it, it'll go away. Uh, you can see we've got some blown out areas right here. There's really some really purple or blue glasses. It's building that one-to-one -one preview. It's actually already been built, but it takes it a second to load. But, you know, that's how Lightroom works. It is a does load a little bit faster on my Mac, but I have not found it to be so much faster as to really apply anything. Now we can see, here's where we go. That The embedded JPEG of the RAW file has been discarded, and this is what we've got. Okay, and that's going to be the same as you can see all these changed as well. So when we look at this image, the first thing I'm going to do when I come to it is move over to the Develop module. Get rid of this again. Okay, now that we're larger, and I'm going to come right over here and make sure that I can just do... Uh, I like to get uh, an auto. I like to guess and see. I think this one's one and a half stops off. So let's see if it's about 1.5. No, it was about about one stop, two thirds of a stop uh, or three quarters of a stop off, uh, which is not really a problem. Um, we can come over here and fix it pretty easily. Highlights, I trim them down. I recover highlights by gaining some whites. Shadows, I pull them out so I can see some detail in her hair. Blacks, kill them. Nah, right here. You just murder these colors right here. Uh, and then bring them all the way back up. There it is. And then back down. So now we're messing with the clarity. Now when you start to mess with clarity, right, you can see it is pretty responsive, but it took just a second it hung because it's got to work that whole algorithm. So we're going to bring this down to right here. Now, I don't like the color. We can check it out. Auto. What does it think auto should look like? And boom, look at that. So Lightroom was really good at being able to base a great auto color correction here. This is an interesting photo. It's not one of my more favorite photos. Um, just speaking of that, I can bring some, some vibrancy back. Very simple. Um, and then come on over here add a bit of a vignette in order to bring the focus in. So the photo is definitely nicer, but let's say, let's say that's not what we really wanted to do. Let's, um, let's find something else that's kind of cool, you know, um, yeah. Okay. Here we go. So here's a shot. Uh, a gentleman stood in front of it, but uh, you know, our white balance was all kinds of funky back here. This actually should be white like this. Okay. So we're over here and what could we do? What can we do on this one again? Once again, we can just say at, let's see what you say as shot. That helps a lot, but it's still got some green. So we could bring in just a little bit more blue as we come back out, bring the magenta down. There we go. Now we've got a nice black and white background. Of course, you can come over here and select whatever color you want to be black or white. And we're good to go there because it's, uh, it's ready to make it happen. You can also select his shirt. A nice uh, thing to select is a gentleman's collar. I don't like that, though, because the collar had a cast on it from when the actual um, shot was taken, so it, it kind of murders the background a little bit. So there we go. We bring it back out, and now we can come back over. This is a gentleman, so I'm going to knock down the clarity just a little bit. Okay. Uh, as I do, I could bring up the vibrancy some, just to get his face a little bit. Bring out the whites. Now, this is where we're really going to get that white background to show back up. Uh, drop the highlights down so we can get rid of... What we want to do is get rid of the shine on people's head. And bald people have a, a shine too. Look, the more we clip our highlights, look over here what we're doing too on the histogram, the more his head shines. So we just clip them, we bring them all the way down. Usually uh, I take them all the way down most of the time. Uh, and I recover the highlights by working the white clipper. Okay, my white slider right here. So as you can see by coming up, I can regain and completely clip or I can be nice right about there and have a nice... Um, show right about now just so that you know the fans have kicked in okay and what i'm going to show you right now is just i want you to see what is it the task manager is that what we call it i want you to see just how okay now yeah the task manager okay i just want you to see where the cpu is performing right now so we're going to make this small and i'm just gonna uh, we'll let it sit right there i just want you to watch because it's um people ask that question all the time so now you can see the CPU, the fan kicked in, you know, the heat's right here, if there is any heat on this side of it, but just opposite. So anyways, we're here, we're still working this. We can push the blacks up now, and now we're kind of regaining the detail. We come over here, 
we um, I always noise bust about 20. Uh, and as we bust that noise up right around 20, you know, we're starting to get a composition. I come over here, add a bit of a vignette. It's a little dark on the side, nice. I will crop this just a little bit, you know. I asked him to stand there as a test shot just so that I could get my bearing, and he did an excellent job. All right, we'll bring that down just a little bit right there, and then crop. Boom, there you go. So now we've got a nice image of, you know, to, to be able to present. In fact, that one may need to go back in the pot as a category three. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. So watch this, he's gonna disappear. Boom, now it's gone because I, I liked that image after I was done. So there you go. Just wanted to give you a look at how we edit, okay? Uh, back to our collection right there and you can see um, no throttling, you know, the, uh, no anything like that. The, the machine's just gonna perform nicely and uh, do what you ask it to do. Guys, listen up. I hope that you like this. I'm Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography. Catch me over on Twitter at Rob Ham Photo. You can find me on Facebook and YouTube at Facebook or YouTube.com uh, with the backslash Robert Ham Photography. And uh, take it easy, guys. <laughs>